Hello and welcome, everybody. This is the Hot Corner Insider Live Strategy Session. We do this every Wednesday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time right here on Stock Market TV. A lot of new names today. A lot of new names. You know, this is one of the ways that we analyze market internals. It's just running through our scans, right? We have all these different universes, all these different scans. Hot Corner is, you know, one of our biggest and favorite ones. And we're just running through the stock charts in these universes every day. Hundreds, thousands of charts. So we know when breath is expanding simply because there are more charts that we want to talk about and write about and outline long ideas on in all these scans. So that's kind of um, it's kind of the theme of today is a lot of new trade ideas, breath expansion. Let's hit it. Nothing we discuss here constitutes any solicitation to buy or sell any security. It's all solely for informational purposes, not to be construed as investment advice. For more on our disclaimer, visit stockmarkettv.com backslash terms. No intro today. One chart. <clears throat> One chart. You know the rules. 200 in IWM, 2000 in the Russell 2000. Isn't that convenient? 2000 in the Russell 2000. That's it. That's all you really need to know directionally for this market right now. Is it a green light? Can I add long exposure? Russell 2000 above 2000. I don't think we need to overcomplicate it. Why do I like the Russell 2000 so much? I mean, you could be thinking right now, well, why, why is he so concerned about small caps? It's not about that, right? There's no large caps. There's no mid caps in this index. The Russell 2000 is a great representation of what most stock charts look like. There are far more small caps than large caps. Most stocks look like small caps. The small cap Russell 2000 looks like the value line geometric index. It looks like the equal weight Russell 1000, which is a large cap only index. If you want to pull up EQAL, follow along at home, you'll say to yourself, wow, this EQAL sure looks a lot like IWA or IWM. The bottom line is these the, these indexes that I just threw out, whether it's the value line, some sort of equal weight uh, index like the equal weight Russell 1000 or um, the Russell 2000 itself, like we're looking at here, they all look the same and they're just excellent representations of what the average stock is doing. And that's really what I care about. And if the average stock is giving us a green light, all systems go signal. And I think this is an environment where we absolutely don't just want to, we need to be adding long exposure. We need to be adding our exposure to risk, right? We want to be moving further and further out on the risk spectrum as the rally broadens and includes more and more groups. It's not, it's no longer just the large mega cap, you know, quality blue chip names. It's a lot of other stuff beneath the surface. A lot of things that people might call lower quality, right? You might hear words like the trash trade. I don't think you need to overthink it or think too much about whether it's trashy or not, because it's a trade. You don't have to marry these stocks. You can get some really nice high beta moves and some junky stocks during bull markets. In fact, you can get some of the best moves. trash trade i think that's where we're headed i heard somebody on the tv this week they said we are no longer in the disbelief stage right talking about cycles the psychology of cycles where the market tends to be characterized by a feeling or an emotion at each stage of a cycle i think recently he was making the point recently we were in the disbelief stage where bears were doubting this rally. They were doubting this new bull market in a big way. It feels like we've left disbelief. Bears are capitulating. Everybody's kind of on board, right? But it's still before the euphoria stage, the blow off. Russell 2000 completing this trend reversal, indicating that now for the average stock or for most stocks or for whatever you want to say, just small cap stocks, the trend is now higher. That's a big, big deal. I think we want more energy 
I think we want more cyclicals, more economy stocks. I mean, we've done a great job um, getting into industrials this whole cycle. But how about materials? Right? I think oil and gas is about to dig in and rebound here in a big way. We're already seeing it. Uh, so this is Jeff Ubin. I think that's Value Act. Big Form 4 filer last year. This is ExxonMobil. Look at this monster, monster, monster base. Clean level, just north of 100. We have those 2014 highs. This looked like a little top in Exxon <clears throat> over the past year or two. Looked like we were scooping lower, or, or breaking lower, rather. And then we got the scoop move higher, reclaiming these you know key 2014 highs, reclaiming the pivot lows of this little range. I think this is headed right back to the upper bounds of the range. Maybe we finally get the breakout this time. Right, This thing's been up and down and all around between like 100 and 120 over the past few years, just trading in this 20% range. Oftentimes, when you finally get that upside resolution, right? So, so a bullish breakout from this range, we often see it started by a failed move, just like that, which I've circled here in green, right? Oh no, this is a top, right? Shorts, you know, shorts get short here. Then all of a sudden we whip it higher, right? Trap the bears, they got a cover, and just look at how big of a level this is. And so that can often kick off a nice rally up to and through the upper bounds of a range. I think that might be an Exxon Mobil's future. If you're just looking for a trade, you could trade it to those highs uh, from last year, around 120. Uh, if you want more, I think the first Fibonacci extension coming in right around 150 um, is an excellent target. We have been digging in more and more and noticing can't help but notice that there are more and more bullish chart patterns more and more you know charts that we want to be buying coming out of the energy space so what did we do we ran a scan said okay we want to see all of these energy names these are some of the strongest ones energy leaders simply um <clears throat> sorted by percentage from all time highs right we could do 52 week highs also and i think we will uh because this this kind of script using all-time highs will give preference unduly, right? I don't, unintended preference to names that have IPO'd more recently, right? Therefore, they don't have those 2014 or pre-financial crisis highs to deal with uh, that we see the older stocks in the space dealing with. Sunoco. Uh, this is ticker symbol SUN. It's an MLP name. The midstreams continue to be very strong. Beautiful base breakout here. If we're above 60, got to be long Sunoco, target of 90. So, you know, both of these 50% price targets. They're not small stocks either. But energy, you know, if we're betting on these massive, massive structural base breakouts, 50%. Is actually not very aggressive, especially if you have the right time frame for it. Fifty percent, fifty percent move in an energy name, even one of the blue chips, right? Even one of these multinationals like Exxon, is not crazy at all, right? These are cyclical names. They are um, <clears throat> linked to the price of like the underlying commodity. In this case, crude oil, right? In some cases, more gasoline or the crack spread. So you can get moves. You can get really big moves. And that's just the case for all commodity stocks, really all cyclical stocks. So I, you know, I love these bases here. Uh, both of them looking great, very actionable. Philip 66 broke out of a similar base recently. 124, this one's well on its way. Our target of 176. Nucor, we also just got long Valera. Um. <clears throat> On the premium blog, Nucor Corporation ticker symbol NUE. This is one of the leaders in terms of, or at least in the world of industrial metals. And what we want to see is just like we talked about at the top of the call, we want to see this participation broaden into groups that mm, we really haven't talked much about because they haven't been real leaders at all this whole cycle. And materials is is top of mind, right, on this theme. We need to see materials participate, participate more, participate in a, in a broad way, like we're seeing from industrials. Go check out the report, Deep Dive on Industrials, uh, on the blog. We want to see other sectors 
look like industrials where everything's working beneath the surface, small, large, all the industry groups, right? What has to happen first, which we're seeing in financials right now, right, is the leaders have to lead out the gates. The leaders have to kind of kick that off. If the leaders can't break out, you're not going to see the laggards start, you know, uh, trending well. The leaders got to break out, right? I'm talking about the JP Morgans. Um, we're seeing it Fargo, right, in the banks. Financials, broad strength, you know, interactive brokers, a lot of breakouts in financials from the financial leaders. Now we think, okay, now let's see that strength kind of, kind of, you know, spread down the cap scale to other groups of financials, smaller financials. Same thing with materials. We need to see Nucor and Reliance Steel and Southern Copper, right? The secular leaders in this space break out if we're going to see broad participation in the group. I think that's coming. So 178 in Nucor, we just put on, I think, an options. Um, I think I'm in the, the Julys. JC said he was in January's. I don't know. You can go check it out on Sean's blog on the website. We did just put some sort of options trade on Nucor. Basically, you got a massive base. A nice run, right, off of the COVID lows, the pandemic lows from 2020. Huge run, like 5, 6x. And just, you know, sideways in a triangular type of consolidation ever since. So 178 really marks the breakout from this um, little, little you know, continuation pattern. So 178, uh, target 272. That's a new core steel. Semiconductors, they keep working. I remember when we got long this one, it wasn't long ago. Uh, Lamb Research, wasn't this one breaking out like the same time as um, Monolithic Power, MPWR? Just talked about this one. Yeah. So look, December, we got the breakout. Here we are, barely in March. First target hit almost 40%. These stocks are going to keep working, right? Uh, do they go through a corrective wave? Are we going to get some prolonged period of sideways at some point this year absolutely zoom out and you take a longer time frame and you're thinking in terms of six to 12 months or a year plus these stocks are going to keep hitting price targets right these are some massive breakouts uh the more you zoom out the bigger these bases are you'll see bases going back to the dot-com bubble and a lot of these semiconductor leaders right and you can make the argument they're just getting started so if you could be patient with these names, you know, if you're already in this one, you could keep it on. If you're not in it, you know, you could put it on on strength above 997. There's a lot we could do here. But we see these patterns over and over and over again in the semiconductor space. and They just keep working. So let's keep leaning into them, right? And the pattern I'm talking about is we got the prior cycle highs, this nice little rounding bottom reversal pattern, back up to testing those old highs, finally get the breakout. We're seeing a lot more than one target get hit following those breakouts, at least in the ones that have already happened. So LAM Research, uh, 997 is our new level, 1430, new target. Advanced Micro. We talked about it, what, two, three weeks ago, right before I left for New York City. I remember I told you guys all what I was doing, risk reversal. I sold puts right here as we were coiling. Sold some puts, bought some calls. I think that's the 195 strike call, still got them. The puts are worthless. And this pattern did what we've seen every other pattern, particularly a semiconductor chart pattern like this, did the same thing we've seen every other one do this cycle, whether it's NVIDIA or Broadcom, or like we just talked about LAM research, or now I know applied materials looks this way, or monolithic power. Why would AMD look any different? We don't have to make this any harder than it already is for ourselves. AMD above 165, got to be long. We're already you know, kind of no man's land right now, well on our way, but uh, that first target up there is 233. Huh, look at this one. You, you guys notice any similarities here? This is the same pattern, right? So when we got this dip in CrowdStrike, and I'll admit I missed it, and I was... I. Spent one day here. This is the Palo Alto sell-off. One day. I was like, oh, I'll get it tomorrow. And it ripped higher than what came back yesterday. I wasn't paying attention. Now it's gapping higher on earnings again today. This is one of those trends that is just so good that if you're not paying real close attention and have some alerts going, uh, you, you, you just, you're just not getting into it. So I'm even considering buying this right here against those uh, February highs around 330, 335. 
uh, right here today because we we do have some intraday weakness. This was as high as 365 today, back down to about 335 here now. Listen, <clears throat> I can't, I have no way of knowing whether this thing ever comes back and retest this 300 level or if 425 uh, we see before that, right? So what you can do in situations like this where you feel like something's running away from you and maybe you really want to get into it. And I love the fundamental story here. I love the, the um, relative strength. I love the, I love the technicals, everything about this. They just had a monster earnings beat today. They seem like one of those companies that's at the forefront of a big mega trend and is doing everything right. This is my kind of name. So what you can do, if you feel like something's running away from you and you didn't get the entry you wanted, and you might never get the entry you wanted, you could scale in, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I'll probably do something similar uh, or something like that mm -hmm. in the case of CrowdStrike. Maybe nibble in here today, but just continue to miss this one. And then I think, you know, hey, Palo Alto was down 30% after they reported. Maybe CrowdStrike will be, right? No. So you didn't get the opportunity to get in. What a lot of investors will do is they'll say, well, I'm going to go buy Palo Alto, right? Because that one's down 30%. Problem is with stuff like that, the stocks that go up after earnings go up after earnings for a reason. And the ones that don't go up after the earnings are not going up for a reason, right? The valuation will change. We, we will have a new E in that price to earnings equation, right? Maybe the estimated E that, that we were using to value the stock is no longer the right earnings estimate. So I don't know if that's really the right move either to go after Palo Alto because you do have some weakness here. I think both are great. Uh, continue to show leadership. I know Palo Alto is struggling a little bit here. Um, but I think they, they can both be somewhat actionable right here today. Cyber is just a really interesting group. It's a group of stocks that we want to keep focusing on. And I think we'll continue to be fishing uh, in this cybersecurity pond for years and years and decades into the future. What do you think we'll be saying about cybersecurity stocks decades from now? Can't wait to find out. JP Morgan Chase, speaking of leaders, JPM looking a lot like CrowdStrike and AMD, right? See those prior cycle highs, big rounding bottom. Uh, now we're back there, taking it out. This is what the leaders look like back above those old highs. We like buying leaders. Scott Franklin. House of Representatives member, not a small purchase for a politician. 100 to 250K. 173 is the level for JP Morgan. If you're not already in it, I think there are better opportunities in financials and even in the banks. <clears throat> Wells Fargo also. I'm in it. I'm looking to get out of it. Really tight trailing stop uh, on my position right now. I'm in options that expire in about two or three weeks. Um, so same thing as JP Morgan. If you're not in it, I'm not, I wouldn't get in it here. We talked all about this one when this base completed. We talked all about it here at 49. It had a shaky start, but you see that all the time. When you get these textbook trend reversal patterns, sometimes you'll get a big mess as it's getting out of it, and you want to be patient. And if you get stopped out once or stopped out twice, that's okay. Keep taking, you know, you want to keep taking shots at it because eventually you do get, you know, move like this typically. So Wells Fargo, wait till it's back at 60. And then from there, I mean, this one's going to be at new all time highs very soon. Citigroup, uh, you want something actionable? This is, this is for you. Citigroup. You got the VWAP here showing the dotted blue line. You have a nice shelf of former highs, right? Just a very clear and clean base uh, resolving higher from it today. It's not at 56 anymore. 57 and a quarter. Very actionable right here. Just kind of taking out those late January highs uh, today. The highs right here. Citigroup I do like. Bank of America also looks quite actionable. Uh, just check, checking, my, checking my charts here. Guys, I continue to like the regionals. You know, if you're like me and you just keep taking swings at things that you like and aren't afraid to get stopped out for small losses along the way, and you don't hate me already for maybe uh, getting stopped out of Key Corp. We had a great trade on Key Corp actually in November, but I'm 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 getting busy with the regional banks again. I really like it. I like the setup. I think I think maybe I'm getting a little bit cute. It is an anticipatory trade, uh, in other words, where it's. I'm making the bet that, hey, if all these big banks, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, Wright City, we just talked about Bank of America, Goldman Sachs looks great. Morgan Stanley was up like 6% the other day. I don't even know why. Um, we're making the bet that these big banks are kicking off the move, and then we're going to see rotation uh, down the cap scale into some of the regional or community banks, the smaller names. Uh, QB. 
I don't know if you guys have heard, but it, it is very much a new bull market for cryptos. I don't even know if you can call it new anymore. Um, maybe new for some people, but it is a bull market for cryptos. And this is your new crypto bank, QB, C-U-B-I. This is a crypto stock, I promise you. Remember Silvergate? You remember uh, Signature Bank? All of their old customers are now customers, Bank Corp customers. That was a mouthful. CUBI, we got a clean level here at the 62% Fibonacci retracement. You can play it right off of there. I was trading around, you know, 54-ish here today. With a risk level around 50. And yeah, this one's actionable here. Target at 76.50. I like the banks that look different. I like the regional banks that don't look like the regional bank index, right? This is one of them. Uh, there are others, many of which are actually um, based outside of the U.S. and doing business outside of the U.S., right? So I guess the the pressure on regional banks, at least for now, seems to be confined to within the United States borders, right? We're not seeing uh, other small to mid-sized banks, and even the big banks overseas, too, doing really well, whether it's in Japan or uh, many of which many in Europe uh, are doing well, but we do have some regional banks listed on U.S. exchanges that do business overseas uh, that look really good too. QB kind of looks like some of those. Uh, we talk about them on here sometimes. OFG Bank Corp is one. Uh, Wintrust another. WTFC. This one also looks different. Massive base too. Uh, Ninety. Call it a hundred. Hundred dollar roll here. This one's about to break out. Uh, it looks great. Just pulling the chart up here. Yeah, this this chart looks excellent. Maybe my favorite. Maybe my favorite in the banking space right now. So if we're above, above 100 in Wintrust, target 148. I'm long merchants. It's MBIN, Merchants Bank Corp. We're above 41. Long with a target of 53. The leadership here just continues to really, really stand out. Again, we like the ones that look different. This one looks like most regional banks. Okay, but I think we could take shots on these two. This is Bank of California, BANC, really, really took a big hit uh, last year on the First Republic blow up <clears throat> and Silicon Valley, right? Anything in California really got, got hit the hardest. We're above 15, though. You could trade this back up here to 20. You could even, you know, quick trade maybe to these highs here at 18. Not my favorite, uh, but there are trades to be made in some of these weaker regionals. M&T Bank, this is my bank, shout out. Uh, so MTB, if we're above 141, long with a primary target of 161 and a secondary of 193.50. Key Corp, here we go, 1485 is that level. Working around it right now, we're at 1487 as I speak. Look out, if these things go, look out. Because, I mean, just, just look at this. First of all, there's a lot of empty space here. There's a lack of price memory. So these these chart setups tend to act as vacuums, right? Once you get in to this volume pocket per se, right? there weren't many trades made here because of the way that KeyCorp came crashing down in Q1 of 2023 during the regional banking crisis. Once we get in there, it's not uncommon to see outsized moves or you know a quick increase in momentum come into the name once it gets into these volume pockets type situations. So I think key core before above 1485 target of 20. I like this one. The reversal's in and we're just consolidating at the upper bounds just above the breakout level of the reversal pattern. So from a purely technical perspective, uh there's a lot to like about this this chart pattern and there are plenty of other regional banks that look very similar, right? Uh Blue Owl Capital Inc. Owl. Another one that just looks really interesting. Uh this is also a financial company, I believe. Yeah, asset management. Never, I don't know what they do, but right, just pinged right up to those old highs and just super high and tight ever since. Just straight sideways, uh, beautiful bull flag. Really nice. So I think you can buy the upside resolution uh, of this little coil if you, if you don't want to just get long here against these prior highs. Wait and buy this on a little bit of strength, right? Uh, buy it on a breakout to new highs above those February highs. Been going straight sideways for almost a month. Following this, you know, beautiful earnings gap up. 
We're above there. Target 2392. Maris, M R U S. Target one hit. This is one of the better looking biotechs out there. Uh, so, target one hit called 48. I think you could leave it on and look for target two at about 71 and change. Yeah, we're trading at 49, 49.50 today. Micro strategy. This one's been really good to us. Uh, so we went back, we were looking through the trade ideas today. We got long micro strategy on this little um, failed move here, right? We got what looked to be a breakdown to new lows and this thing hooked, hooked higher right away. Looked very similar to Coinbase. This was, I believe, January last year, right? We got the little shake and go. We bought the... Um, we bought the whipsaw move back above 135, right? With a target of about, you know, 210 and then 270. Not long after that, we wrote about it again at 350, about a quarter or two later uh, with a target of 500. And then again, once we got to 500, with a target of 885 and 1300. And now here we are at 1300. And do we want to stop using micro strategy? One of the most trusted uh, and, and just best crypto vehicles that we have. We want to, now that we have spot Bitcoin ETFs, we don't need micro strategy, right? That was, that was the narrative a little bit. They even had Michael Saylor come on CNBC and explain why people should buy micro strategy now that they have spot Bitcoin ETFs. Go chart micro strategy against one of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Go, go check their performance against one another. Micro strategy is a Bitcoin ETF, but different from the spot Bitcoin ETFs. It's leveraged. I just saw a press release yesterday, the day before, MicroStrategy issuing 600 million in senior convertibles. They're selling bonds, raising capital to buy Bitcoin. I don't know, maybe they pay 5 7% interest on their bonds. What have they made on Bitcoin over the trailing 12 months? 3x nice spread there nice spread so micro strategy different from the other um you know etf alternatives is leverage it's going to move more it's going to give you higher beta uh than ibit and friends <clears throat> so mstr let's let's look at some new levels here i think called 1300 1300 Long, new highs, target 2050. Target 2050. Listen, this one is going to keep working as long as Bitcoin keeps working. Bitcoin has been leading. It's been really hard to outperform Bitcoin. This is a two, three, four, five X sometimes leveraged alternative to the price of Bitcoin. There haven't been many better vehicles. I would love to say hey, Coinbase has been better. I don't, I don't know. I think it's been close. My base might be better on a just just purely percentage uh, terms. Let me check quick. Let's see, micro strategy off those twenty twenty three lows, stuff like eight hundred and fifty percent. That's better than Coinbase. Uh, Coinbase off of those January lows, six hundred and fifty percent. I don't think any vehicles really beat micro strategy off the lows from last year. So what do we do? We keep going back to the well. 1300 is the new level. Next stop, 2050. Be patient, though. Be patient. Bitcoin needs to cool off here. I actually sold some of my Bitcoin uh, yesterday. I kind of like pick the top, too, for now. But I have a feeling it's going to rip higher. Um, and I might continue to sell some with the idea that that capital will be redeployed into probably riskier, more alternative coins. Right? Again, Moving out on the risk spectrum and down the cap scale. It's the way we want to be thinking. Coinbase, just what a monster. What a monster. Two forty is the new level. Again, I think you can be patient with this one too. Coinbase, I was talking about it on spaces. Maybe go check out the spaces from yesterday. I still like it. I still own a lot of it. I sold the vast majority. 
late last year. Bought a little bit more on the retest of 115. Sold it again when we got back to these pivot highs. And I think the rest of my position, I, I you know, I don't think I'll be trading in and out of this one much anymore. Uh, I want to see those old all-time highs on three, whatever we have here, 367. Maybe even more if you really zoom out on the chart of Coinbase. You got some crazy candle from just after the IPO around like 430. So that's the range I'm looking for, right? That that just post IPO high of like 430, uh, all the way down to really what I think the real all time high is in late 2021 around uh, this 370 level. So that's my ultimate target, and I'll be out there. and And the company will be close to like worth 100 billion dollars at that point, and it will be one of the largest stocks or companies in the financial sector. And it'll be in the same conversation in terms of size. You know, assuming that these companies don't move, which is not a fair assumption, but it'll be the same size that Goldman Sachs or Schwab or City is today. Just about close. Today at whatever, 55, 60 billion, it's larger than interactive brokers. It's larger than just about every regional bank, except for, I think, U.S. Bank Corp and PNC. So this is no longer the same risk reward as when it was an $8 billion stock that everyone thought was a zero and crypto was dead and no one was ever going to own it again get laughed at for talking about this stock in any sort of bullish way and several friends laugh at me for talking about this one late 22 early 23 eight billion dollars right it's six x higher now now they need to put up some real earnings right we got to see what this company can do what its earnings power is like during a bull market for crypto. We saw it during the last cycle, and it was impressive, which is why Coinbase earned the valuation they did when they came public. Now, we got to see it again, and they got to deliver, right? So I hate to say the easy money's been made, um, but that's how I feel about Coinbase. Federal Agricultural Mortgage Corporation. Is this one of those Fannie Mae? I don't know. Uh, AGM. I think it is, right? Fanma? Okay. AGM, long above 195. This one's just a monster. Look, you got the multi-year base breakout off the 2018 highs. Uh, this one consolidates really well at our risk levels, right? Really respecting these Fibonacci as well. I don't think that that this one up here around 195, the 261.8, will be any different. You you buy this, you know, this is a continuation pattern. This is a bull flag. You buy this breakout. Uh, your long gets 196, so the target of 292. It's a really nice chart. Standex International Corporation, SXI. Copeland Capital Management, 13G filer in this one, so that's a passive stake. 160, 150 is the level. I would rather buy on weakness, a little throwback towards this level now, right, than buy it here. So weakness back towards 160, 150 are these pivot highs. Target of 238. <clears throat> these are all new setups, by the way. Uh, after Coinbase, these, these, these are all new names. Janice Henderson Group, JHG. Yours truly, Nelson Peltz, wow. Nelson Peltz. One of the best. Uh, you got a clean base breakout here. You see the 200-day moving average flattening, curling higher, indicating that primary trend is shifting to the upside. You know, as close to 30, maybe 30, 30 as you can get this one um, is where you want it. Target of 37 and a quarter. And from there, those old 2021 highs at 48.50. That's JHG. Again, this is on the theme that we talked about moving down the cap scale, out on the risk spectrum, more and more names participating in these different groups. Uh, so this is that broadening participation in financial steam. DICOM Industries, DY. Multi-year, you know, base breakout here, call it 124. You got those 2022 highs. Really clean above 124. Millennium Management, big long short fund. I believe it's still based in New York City. If we're above 124, target 193. 
This one was just filed a uh, new position as of August of last year. Tenant Healthcare Corp, THC. I love it when the CFOs are buyers. With a CFO buyer in this one, you will notice, we notice all the times, the CFOs pick the best spots. The CFOs make literally the best trades. I'm so sorry. I know people want to think that it's Nancy Pelosi's husband who makes the best trades. He doesn't. Doesn't even outperform the market. If they weren't trading call options in the stuff that they were buying, the Pelosi's returns would not be beating the S&P 500. People hate to hear that. Hate to hear it. People got mad at me on Twitter the other night. I told them the Pelosi's really don't outperform. CFOs consistently outperform. CFO literally knows exactly what the stock's going to do. He knows what the earnings are. It is literally his job to know what the street is expecting from those earnings. He knows what the analysts are saying, what people are whispering about his earnings. CFO is the master insider trader. So where did the tenant healthcare CFO uh, buy stock? In October of 2022, at the lows, just about tripled his money by now, a little more than a year later. We see this all the time. I think it was Adobe. Was it Adobe or or Broadcom? Um, I got to check with Alfonso. I think it was Adobe. You check it on my Twitter. The Adobe CFO did the same thing in October of 2022. These guys are really, really good. They have the information, the right information, right? It's literally their job to manage and understand the stock price and the street's expectations to the stock price and, and you know, whether something, whether there's some sort of results that are going to come out that are going to surprise the street, if it's going to be an upside surprise, a downside surprise. That's what the CFO does all day. That's what he worries about. They have meetings about this stuff. The, the best informed buyer is the chief financial officer. We're above 92.50. We can get long uh, with the tenant health CFO with a target of 127. Davida. Well, uh, this is part of those diabetes stocks that all got absolutely creamed uh, with the rise of the GLP-1 drugs last year. You see this big sell-off here. And look, right back to where we came from. And, and then some. I think that's the healthcare trade this year. Last year, the healthcare trade was long GLP-1s, short anything that gets hurt by GLP ones. I think the opposite is the trade this year. Davida, proving my point. Above 136, I like it long, target of 180. Sky West, we say a lot of not so nice things about airlines on here. Uh, so I was really surprised because all of their charts tend to look terrible. And that that's, that's just, those are the facts. So I was shocked to see this. Uh, this is Sky West. SKYW? Is this an airline, apparently? I've never flown SkyWest. Is this like a, I don't even know if it's a US airline. Is this one of those international ones? It sounds like, like a Midwestern airline. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a regional thing. Anyway, SKYW, this one looks different than the rest of them. Um, go look at Delta American. They, they don't look like this. JetBlue definitely doesn't look like this. So we're above 66. Multi-year consolidation pattern breaking out. Uh, target at 100. Nice and clean. Uh, that's about, yeah, 33%. No, 50% move. Yeah. One Oak. Ooh, oops, this one should be up with the energies, but I, well, we'll talk about a little energy down here too. Uh, one Oak, OKE. Massive base, 10-year base breakout. Maybe not super clean, so you, you could use maybe these 2019 highs as confirmation, but th there is a clear polarity zone right here, a zone. Uh, but we, we just see, saw price kind of test and roll over here too many times. Now breaking through there, absorbing all of this overhead supply uh, at this key resistance zone. We're above 72. I like this one long. I like it a lot. These big bases in energy, they remind me of the big bases in the semiconductors, those dot-com bubble bases, right? Some of our favorite chart patterns. In fact, the three energy names that we've talked about so far, OKE, uh, Sunoco, what was it? And Exxon, all monster bases. Really nice bases. Gentex Corporation, GNTX, uh, not, not as nice of a base. This is like a one and a half, two year base, not a decade long base, but still a base. GNTX, if we're above 3780, we like it long with a target of 4680. 
Auto live, auto live. I don't know how you say that. ALV. A little increase in ownership interest from Sevion Capital uh, about two quarters ago. About 10 to 11%. This one's just breaking out now, though. You know, it's it stopped and reversed at the 2018 peak and then pretty much again at the 21, 22 peak, right around 115. Now back to that level, back to the scene of the crime. Seems to be getting it done this time. And perfectly actionable uh, here, trading around 117. So long against 115 with a target of 163. It's ticker symbol ALV. SLM Corporation. SLM. What is this company? Credit Services. Again, that theme of broadening participation. More and more charts that we want to be buying in financials. This is SLM Corporation, ticker symbol SLM. $5 billion market cap, right? So out on the risk spectrum and down the cap scale. That's where the opportunities are going to be. I think for the rest of this year. And I also think very soon we're going to be we're going to be saying, and outside the U.S., we're running these new emerging market scans. We're talking about making the International Hall of Famers a larger or more encompassing universe. And we don't want to miss stuff. So SLM Corporation, uh, long above 2075. Uh, let me zoom in here. Yeah, twenty really 2075, 21. Target 33. Impactive capital. I'm really finding, you know, these guys, these guys are doing a great job out here. We've been we've been following Impactive for a few years, and I think we're gonna start following them closer and closer. Um they seem to be performing really well. Just based, you know, based on the, the charts that we talk about, a lot from an impactive over the years. So they own nine percent of this SLM. Uh, I like it long if we're above 21, the so target of 33. Let's hit the chat really quick. I know you guys are active in the chat. We got to shut this thing down pretty soon. They have, don't miss it, big, big, big crypto stuff going on in like 12 minutes here on Stock Market TV. So tune in. I think Louie and JC are going to take you through the world of crypto, cryptocurrencies. Lots to talk about there these days. Hump day. That's right. What about Dave Portnoy? Oh, yeah. One chart. You know the rules? Yeah, man. It was. Uh, I like the banks, too. I like them too. That's a good list. That's a great list, Curtis. Great list. That's right, Mary. That's why we get along so well. If you want the juice, a lot of times you're going to own the trash. And that's okay. You know, uh, Oswald DeMotoran was on CNBC the other night. I just loved it. It was so refreshing. I keep talking about it. He came on and he said, if you think NVIDIA or AI stocks or mega cap growth stocks are in a bubble, which he said he didn't think they were. He said, if you think they're in a bubble, there's not much you can do about it, except then don't buy them. Don't buy them. There's plenty of stocks that are not in a bubble. Go buy those. Just seems like common sense, almost. Thought that was great. Uh, MTB looks cool. Would I take a position in Intel? No, I would not. Uh, crowd all day. Wish I, wish I had one. <laughs> yeah, we 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 took key for a nice swing. I think it was November, uh, and then I I hung around a little too long. I think. Okay. Yeah, customers Bancorp stole the customers from the failed crypto banks, right? Ironic. Uh, okay. Win Trust, official bank of the Chicago Cubs. I will never forget going to the Giants game as a kid. Uh, and Bob Shepard would come over the intercom and would say, Wachovia Bank, the official bank of your, your New York Giants. So that's cool. Chicago Cubs. I've never been to a Cubs game. Huge position and beyond. I don't know anything about that, Robbie. Sorry. Uh, Sky West. Reach, I knew it. Yep. Over there in Midwest, Utah. So Sky West, Utah Airlines. Awesome. Too many stocks, not enough, not enough time, not enough money. I know, man. Uh, bull markets, got to love it. All right, guys, this has been fun. Thanks for participating. Thanks for the love in the chat. As always, um, 
Like I said, stick around uh, in just about 10 minutes here. Big crypto event on Stock Market TV. And as always, join us on the morning show. Every morning, me, myself, JC, Spencer, 8.30 to 10 o'clock right here on Stock Market TV. We'll see you next week for the next edition of the Hot Corner Insider Strategy Session.